stopping the coronavirus from spreading at home. New research reveals how often it can spread to another family member who is and who is most at risk for catching it. It's a question certainly many people have wondered. If you or someone in your household becomes infected with COVID-19, what are the odds of it spreading to your family? Well, the newly published study is helping provide some answers and the best way to protect ourselves. Frank Lee George here with the answers. Doc? Yeah, Kim and Devin, you know, if someone you live with develops COVID-19, what would you do? Wear a mask at home? Stop using shared spaces? Maybe isolate them away from everyone else? All of these measures can help, but the fact is many families don't have the space to distance or isolate at home. So assuming people are doing their best, how often did it spread in U.S. households? A new study published in Clinical Infectious Diseases studied the spread of COVID-19 in 58 households in Utah and Wisconsin. Those states were chosen because at the time the study was being done, there was limited community spread. So if someone in a household became infected, it was more likely it had happened at home, not in the community. Among the 58 households studied, 54% of them saw the virus spread to at least one other household member. When spread occurred, children under 18 were the most commonly infected at 42%, followed by adult children over 18 who were infected 35% of the time, and finally spouses or partners of the first patient who were infected 33% of the time. Interestingly, spread was more likely to occur when the first person infected was male, 36%, compared to 18% when the first infected person was female. The researchers also found household members with diabetes were significantly more likely to become infected, occurring 80% of the time. Because of this, the authors suggested people with diabetes who are both at higher risk for acquiring infection and developing complications should be especially vigilant in separating from COVID-19 patients and taking other precautionary measures. Now the average size of the homes was 2,200 square feet, and, but the size of the home did not relate to the likelihood of spread. Also, the initially infected person actually slept in a separate bedroom 88% of the time, but this also did not correlate with the risk of spread to others. It's really interesting, Doc, I, because I think there's been a certain fatalism about once it gets in your house. But to look at this then through another uh, from the other direction, it's important to note that not everyone in a household with a COVID-19 patient became infected. Yeah, you know, important point. In fact, there was no spread in 41% of the households that were studied. On the other hand, in 12% of the households, everyone else was infected and unfortunately the study was not able to distinguish what accounted for that difference and the authors did point out that's probably something for future study back to you there see instead of 60 percent chance of showers there's a 40 percent chance of not showers <laughs> all right doc thanks